Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Uh, had a few of my lights fall over there, so um, had to do what I had to do. Uh, but I think I'm still well lit enough. Uh, welcome in to Wake Up Legendary, my friends. If this is your first time here, uh, you are going to experience something new and different today that you're not uh, usually seeing out there on the internet. And that is that we are talking to everyday regular people uh, who have taken our training and courses and are succeeding with them. Uh, we're not talking to gurus. Uh, we're not talking to people who have been doing this for years or decades. Um, we are talking to ordinary, everyday people just like yourself who are having extraordinary wins because they're taking massive action on the things that they're learning here within this community. So uh, with that being said, all the way from Australia, it's midnight there. I'm so excited to talk to this guest. She's a data analytics consultant uh, who's turned to digital marketing uh, as a lifeline after a family health scare. Parody, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. Thank you for joining us so late over there. It's really my pleasure and honor to be hosting you and have you here with us. Thank you so much. It's good night legendary for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. So tell us, you know, you are from Australia. I'm excited to hear about your story and what you've overcome to get here. Tell us what led you to legendary. What were you looking for when you when you found us? And do you believe that you found what you were looking for? Wow, that's going to be a long one, but I'll try. So I moved to Australia last year after my wedding. And being an immigrant in Australia, reality hit me that immigrants are not rich because I thought so when I was in India, right? Immigrants are rich, super rich. So when I came here, didn't have a job, quit my job, came here, a lot of immigrant struggles, fees, visas. And then on top of that, the day I moved here, 15 days later, I got to know that my dad has to go through a transplant. And then we are planning the funds and everything. And we see that we have to actually go through a fundraiser. And that hit me because we are three kids and including my brother-in-law and my husband, we are five now, five kids who are thriving, sharing selfies on social media, saying that, you know, living our lives. And when it came to financial emergency, we had to go through a fundraiser. So I became a maniac that my nine to five is not going to solve that problem for me. And I love my job. I love the work of the job, but the money is not, you know, it's not enough, no matter what you do. And that's when I thought that I have to do something. And because I'd kind of failed a lot of um, businesses, I couldn't scale them. So I was looking for something to learn from scratch, from A to Z. I just wanted to go head on and I was like, there's just one thing I need, one place where I can learn everything and I'd give my heart to it. And there you were. <laughs> mm. so. Wow. Wow. And so um, th that's a lot. Um, my father also went through a serious surgery uh, this year. He had a open heart surgery and uh, he had, he was in the hospital for 77 days. He had a lot of complications and it was a really scary time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really can relate to that. Um, and that was the first kind of big medical scare that I had from either one of my parents, you know, as we get older, we, mm -hmm. we start to experience our older relatives, uh, having health challenges. Uh, it's a reality. Every person deals with it and not a single one of us get out of this place alive. We're all going to come to an end at yeah. some point, but mm -hmm. as people in our, you know, thirties, forties, you know, around the age that, that, that you are, and, and I am, I'm, I'm approaching 40, I can relate to wanting to help, wanting to do everything that I can. And I can understand that frustration. That was really powerful how you said that you, you and your brothers and sisters were, um, were, were sort of your image, like, for example, on social media was that everything was good. You were fine, financially stable, et cetera, et cetera. But when it came time to do what actually mattered, you, you were short on resources. Exactly. And so that really hit me that that really hit me. Um, gosh, it, 
it, it's, it's, this is why we do what we do. This is why I've been doing what I've done for the past decade. Wow. And I've been able to help my, my, my family in a lot of different ways. What are some of the ways that you've already been, been impacted and been able to impact others just since you've started? I think coming from a place and a position where, you know, everyone thought it was a scam. I thought it was a scam and just people trusting me enough and just texting me normally saying that I trust you. I've never trusted anyone, but I trust you. So I'm taking that leap. Mm. I think that's enough for me, for them to start, because I know that even if they might not like this avenue, but now they will not stop looking. Mm. That's the biggest thing. Once you start, even if you scale or you don't scale, you just then don't stop looking. So I think that's the way I see it. Yeah. I I was reading through your questionnaire and you said that um, it looks like you're doing, um, you know, a variety of different things. You're, you're, you've got some experience in nutrition and health and wellness and you're also promoting some some uh, online marketing and make money online products, um, but uh, you're already starting to earn here online. And and what has that been like after being somebody who had uh, a data data analyst, right? I mean, you you ha probably have a lot of different um, education and probably degrees. And um, all of, uh, where are you originally from? India. All of my Indian friends are also very. Um, driven, very educated. Uh, it's very big in their families and in their culture to um, pursue success and to be successful. And oftentimes that's their parents' wishes. And I mean, there's a whole lot of, I've got a lot of really close, wonderful Indian friends. Um, one who's one of my best friends and, and I know intimately his experience with his family. But what has it been like for you to do this unconventional non-traditional education that started with a seven dollar course i didn't tell my husband about it <laughs> <laughs> i literally purchased it didn't tell him and then i was i was just standing in a corner fearful and you know skeptic and i'm like i did something today and he's like what is that i said i spent seven dollars or something and he's like okay why are you so scared about it I said I and these my were my words. I said I gave into a scam finally. It was <laughs> seven dollars, you know. And he's like, you are so he literally disowned me. Like, you are so educated and you are an you are a consultant. People look up to you. You see data every day. And that's when I told him, I see data every day. I see marketing data every day, and there's always email channel, organic channel, paid channel, affiliate channel. And I never saw it for six years. I have six years of experience as a data analytics consultant. And I never saw it. I just went to Google, the theoretical part of it, affiliate marketing, this is the channel, that's it, Google it, and that's all. So I, that's where we started to research the practical implication of the word affiliate. And it boggles me because I was trying and I won't say I was a bad nutritionist. I could see that I had the same knowledge that the successful ones had. So what was I missing? Mm. I had and I had a lot of companies reach out to me saying that, hey, we really like your content. You know, if you partner with us, we'll give you a 10 percent discount code and then you can earn from it. I just never knew. I just I just thought that's how brand deals work. Mm. I mean, can you imagine that a person who's worked in data for six years? did not see or ignore the fact that she's looking at affiliate channel, affiliate channel, affiliate channel every single day. Yeah. So that, that was an eye opener for me. And, and where did you go to university at? India. You went to India? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're, you're well-educated, highly educated. You're, you're, you're staring at d data every day. You're consulting. Um, you're doing important work and, 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 and still yet, uh, you had not either learned, been, been educated about this huge market in sort of the foundation of the internet, which really is affiliate marketing. I mean, affiliate marketing, why do I say such a huge claim? That's a big, that's a big, that's a big thing you just said, Dave. Why do you say that? Well, because 
affiliate relationships really are the foundation of the internet because it's sort of um, it's sort of the way in which companies partner with each other and send each other traffic. Um, there's lots of different types of affiliate deals, um, but but if you look down at the bottom of every site, almost nearly every site on the internet has a little link that says affiliate partners, right? Yeah. Uh, from from you know from you know excuse me but the the pornography sites <laughs> all the way over to yeah. um, to to social media sites to Walmart to Amazon I mean what a lot of people don't realize about Amazon for example which is the largest online retailer you know next to I think Alibaba but I believe Amazon is larger I'm not yeah. sure where Alibaba is at now. Um, and never really tracked it uh, that much because I've not ever been into drop shipping or anything personally. But uh, uh, Amazon has, you know, there is a huge percentage of the sales that happen on Amazon that are sold by essentially their affiliate partners. Um, they they are people who come on to a, to, to Amazon and in in uh, you know sell their own products as well. There are people who can get an affiliate link to sell any product on Amazon to earn a commission. You're pointing. You've done that before. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's. I mean, you you just don't know until you start. Before you start, you're only looking at just one thing, right? And mm -hmm. then you start, and you see that okay, it was everywhere. Where was I? Mm. What was I doing? So it's yeah. that kind of a revelation for you. It's amazing. So as you are going through, you're you're highly educated. Um, you've got uh, a, you had a you have or have a wonderful job, um, and uh, and and you're now going through a scammy right as you thought <laughs> a scammy seven dollar course you even went on to um invest in the blueprints fully invest in your education here at legendary what is this learning experience been like for you i want to talk about your social media and your success as a marketer here in a moment you've you've got a significant following on uh instagram you've got one hundred and twelve thousand followers on instagram which is impressive and i want to talk about that here in a moment but what was it like for you to kind of go through this education and have these light bulbs go off? You've touched on it a little bit, but what, how, how did you approach that? How did you, how have you made the most out of it? First thing I would say that because I come from a background where I tried different businesses, small scale, large scale, but I couldn't scale. So that's the reason I decided that I'll first focus on marketing. That was my only thing because I was I could see that I was failing because no matter what business you're on today, you need to have marketing skills. So that's where I started. When I started, I saw, oh my, that was a light bulb moment. Okay, where was I? What was I doing? All of the things that were wrong. So I always tell people that don't start until you learn everything, at least from the course you're taking. Learning never stops. Even now we're learning something. But then if you have a pathway in front of you, don't start just, we are so eager to begin, we're so eager to begin that on day one, we are like, okay, today I'll begin tomorrow, tomorrow I'm a millionaire, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of grasp everything that you can. So when I pay for the blueprints, I tell them, even without the blueprints, I used to ping my business plan advisor a lot. And I have literally read all of your emails. Joanne's email is the one that got me my first commission. So read everything, be thorough. You can all, always you can always Google now that you have the direction, you make informed decisions. And that's how I think you'd succeed because now you have the authority of, over the subject because you took time to learn. So yeah. that was my learning lesson from all of this. I love that. And it's so, there's a, there's a fine balance between there's a there, everything in moderation, right? Is sort of a saying that that is is very popular and very true, and so there's got to be a balance somewhere between not getting started too soon, where you don't know what the heck it is that you're doing, but yeah. also not waiting so long that you feel like you need to be an absolute perfectionist or expert at everything. Yeah. And I I like what you said because. 
so often we put an emphasis or just people in general put an emphasis on get started, you know, get started. And, and really though, if you're running in the wrong direction, then that is a miserable place to be. After mm -hmm. It's like, think about it. If you're traveling somewhere and you've been driving for six hours in the wrong direction, it's like, you've been doing a lot of driving, you've burned a lot of gas and mm -hmm. you've gone a long way. You've put out a lot of energy. You're really tired. You're exhausted. But you, 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 and if you were going in the right direction, it'd all be worth it. But if you were going in the wrong direction, that's yeah. frustration. And I think you make a very important point there that, you know, even if you are only going to go through our 15 day challenge, go mm -hmm. through the entire thing. If you are going to invest in the blueprints here, which there's not a lot of things to invest in here at Legendary, it's not 50,000 different things. We made a conscious decision to have an appetizer and a main entree. And the appetizer can wet your whistle. It can get you started. The main entree can take you anywhere that you want to be because it comes with coaching and ongoing feedback and coaching calls and updated information. But at the very least, if you're going to go through our blueprints, go through the affiliate marketing business blueprint. And you also make a, a great point about marketing. This is something that... I want to reiterate because so often people think that starting a business is getting your business cards made and okay. getting your website up and getting all, even getting your LLC done or your corporation, um, you know, you know, even making your business plan and all this, which are all things that we encourage people to do. But mm -hmm. after all, the name of our company is legendary marketer. Mm -hmm. For yeah. a very specific reason, because Parity, I also realized over a decade ago that the number one thing that I needed to know, even if I hadn't gone to business school, didn't understand accounting, all of this other stuff, I needed to know how to market. And mm -hmm. at the very least, if I could get started selling somebody else's product, Mm -hmm. as an affiliate and only focus on the marketing and let yeah. them focus on the product creation, the fulfillment, the merchant accounts, the customer service, mm -hmm. I could actually make a living just focused on that. And oh, by the way, there happened to be a business model called affiliate marketing that I could use. So I love that you pointed that out. And the reason why we have the core four business models is because once you do understand marketing, through through testing and succeeding promoting somebody else's product, if you then want to create your own product and be a product owner, yeah. well, there's a perfect, sensible path to do that. And we even say, these are the type of products that we suggest you sell, information products, and here's why, right? It's a clear path, and, and, and it sounds like as you were going through our education, you saw that path. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I think I also think I want to add to this point that there's an initial investment cost and there's the running cost. If you want to save money in your initial investment, your running cost is going to be huge. And because you invested in the right places in the beginning itself, you can always decrease your running cost and effort and time. So you can even scale quickly. And I think that is why when I invested in the blueprints and to go all in, I did that before starting because I just, first of all, obviously I didn't just want to fail another business. I just want to learn everything from A to Z. But on top of that, I have always seen that if you don't invest your time, effort and money, all three of them now, I knew that I'll have to maybe employ more people. Some other marketer will sell me some other strategy. And I needed to know everything about my business before I started. And that's, I think that's how you probably see results quickly. Yeah. And it doesn't have to take forever. It's just yeah. dedicating a good 30 days, a good, you know, I mean, just go through what you bought. It's sort exactly. of like, you know, the frustrations that many men have where we buy a piece of furniture and we say, ah, I'm not going to read the instructions. And then, you know, we end up having to go back and dig the instructions out of the garbage can. Or another thing that us men like to do a lot uh, is, you know, get started on a home project, right? And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call in a con a contractor. I'm gonna save the money, 
right? Yeah. So we get started on the home project. Maybe we're gonna go, going to retile the bathroom or retile the floors. And, and you know what? Maybe we do finish the job, but because we didn't really know what we were doing, it looks like crap. Yeah. Uh, and the worst thing is, which I saw this a lot when I was working with my father, somebody would actually wave the white flag and call us in because they had started trying to save money. And then somebody else had to come behind them and tear it all down and restart. And so often, you're right, we do that. We, we start without reading the instructions, and then we get down the road and realize, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm failing. I'm f feeling afraid. So now I'm vulnerable to everybody else's pitch out there who's, who's there to sell me any, any strategy that's under the sun. And, and now I'm, you know, I'm even more overwhelmed when I could have just at the very beginning gone through what I bought you know, exactly. and just learned what I needed to learn. You're making some powerful points. What was it like for you once you did feel confident enough to get started and start marketing to actually create content? Talk to us about, you know, being somebody who I would think is pretty analytical, is pretty, um, you know, is not, is maybe your, cre your, your analytical and data-driven side of your brain may be more, um, uh, more sort of dominant over your creative side. I'm not sure. I'm just assuming. But what was it like for you to 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 actually turn on the camera and begin showing your face and creating sort of creative marketing content? First of all, I finished my iPhone's storage in about 15 days because I am a big introvert. I know it might not look like that, but I am a huge introvert. I just kept recording videos and deleting them, kept recording videos and deleting them. And even in the morning, wake up, just talk to the mirror without a script. So that's how I prepped before I launched. And I kept delaying the launch next Monday, 1st of May and all of those dates, you know, 9 a.m., all of those things that we do. So I kept doing that. One day I just put a video out there with a background video and some text and I went to bed closed my phone and went to bed. And now that I'm live, I have to go live every day. Now I can't back off. Wow. And that's how you improve every single day. I never knew, you're right, that because of the analytics side of everything, I was not creative. And I never really understood how these people are showing up every single day, three to four times a day. I just couldn't do that. And now I just pick up my phone, I wake up, I pick up my phone, record one minute of a video and just post it like that. Mm -hmm. Just post it. So that's, that was it. In so many ways, content creation has taught me that just showing up changes lives. That's all. In, a, in the first life that it changes is <laughs> mine, right? Mine. Course. That's the that's the you know you don't change other people's lives until you change your own yes. right and so often we want to as my my dear and in in good buddy um, uh, let me find this comment here this is such a funny comment uh, uh, Tim Hewitt said I bought the blueprints yesterday and started posting today and I don't have any followers yet <laughs> right it's like it's like shout out to Tim. Uh, wow. it, it's so true. You know, we, we buy something like say a course, right? Like, like the challenge or the blueprints or whatever. And it's like, okay, I bought it, you know, um, it, you know, uh, you know, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna, just gonna throw a video out there and just hope and pray. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, yeah. you know, I'm not changing any lives yet. I'm not making any money yet. And it's yeah. like, it's like, it's like this, the, the, the first transformation that has to happen is your own. Yes. And you've talked a lot about the, the what that transformation should look like. And mm -hmm. what it should look like, my friends, is there is a there is a there is a um, a, a, a sort of um, incubating period where mm -hmm. you first enroll in a program and you go through that program, right? Yeah. You don't just enroll, you know, and then, okay, I'm, I'm enrolled. I'm ready to change lives. I'm a, ch you know, I'm ready to go yeah. out there and change the world. It's like, no, you got to go through Absolutely. the program, 
right? You have to go, you know, there's a reason why we do these wake up legendary calls every day. They should be listened to in conjunction as you're going through the program because you're going through the curriculum and then you're getting to listen to real world examples of people who have gone through the dad gum program. <laughs> and you get to hear how, you know, you get to hear their stories. You, 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 it adds a human element, something for you to relate to. And then, then it is time to implement what you've learned inside of the program. And you, you explained it perfectly. It's going to be awkward at first. It's going to be uncomfortable at first. Now you're doing something else that's new, right? And after a while, once, because you know what you're doing and you're doing the right actions and you're going to get results, maybe bigger, maybe smaller, everybody's going to be different maybe slower, maybe faster, but you're going to get some sort of results if you're taking the right action consistently. And those results are going to create a, now what are those results going to be at first? Comments, a little bit of engagement. Somebody yeah. may be sending you a message saying, wow, that was really helpful. Yeah. That's going to create the transformation inside of yourself. That's going to build the confidence. That's going to help you to begin to become the next best version of yourself. That's the first transformation that happens. Then from that confidence in that conviction that you have in what you're doing, then you are ready to start yeah. attracting the masses. Then you are ready to actually start serving people, not before, not right after you enrolled in the program and now you're ready to go make a million dollars and you're not getting any views and you're going, this doesn't work. No, you didn't work. Yeah, exactly. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. What comes up for you as I rant here, right? I mean, I, uh, this feels like it fits, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I took three nutrition trainings before I launched and I did not succeed. That's the key word. I couldn't make it. And it's okay that you couldn't make it, but you have to figure out why and work on that instead of just saying that this whole thing doesn't work. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, so uh, what has what has it been like now with your husband and your family? And ha ha give us an update on the status of, 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 <laughs> of those relationships. And... Oh. Tell us how you're navigating that coming from a, a, I would assume a family who's, who takes education and career very seriously and traditional career at that, right? Most Indian families do. Okay. That's why there's so many successful people in our country, the United States of America, who are Indian. Why? Because their families are very, very, very strict and it is very important for their children to get a good education and have a good traditional well-paying job now internet marketing doesn't usually fit in in that description so so how are you navigating that parody how is that going for you now i think a lot of my friends still don't really know what i'm doing and because i didn't tell anyone i didn't tell my own husband right and I didn't tell my parents until I made my first commission. And that's when they asked me, what are you doing exactly? Like, what? I mean, where's this money coming from? And I'm like, yeah, something, maybe, maybe someday I'll explain it to you. And then my husband saw the drive that I'm waking up every day, creating content, planning everything, because that takes some kind of effort, reading. And I'm an early sleeper, being the nutritionist and everything, early sleeper, 10 p.m., even if it was my final exam, I just sleep at 10 p.m. because health, mental health. And then he's looking at me working through the night, learning something, decade in a day, watching the whole thing. And he's like, okay, that's something that she's doing and it looks interesting. And a month later, he comes to me and he says, can you just pass me the password? Maybe I, I, maybe I won't watch it. <laughs> so that's an achievement. That literally is an achievement. And you rightly said that coming from a background of, you know, people who are just too focused on education and traditional jobs and, you know, succeeding traditionally, taking some other pathway that you yourself feel is, was a scam, you feel so terrified of what you're doing. 
and everybody's super judgmental about you. Yes. But now they see, and they found out about my page organically. So they didn't DM me on Instagram or anywhere else. They didn't WhatsApp me. But when I had a conversation with them, just I called them or whatever happened, they were like, you're doing something. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing something. <laughs> and now they're so motivating on days when I feel low. And, you know, my father has been in the in and out of the hospital in the last month. And he's still in the hospital. He's like, keep doing what you're doing. And that's amazing for me. Yeah. For that family, I mean, if he, I, and I keep telling my husband, if you think that this is not working out, I'll quit today. But you have to listen to what I'm doing. You have to understand the whole thing. We will have a discussion. And then we will not do what you don't want me, if you don't want me to do it. Yeah, yeah. I look i i feel like i'm i feel like i'm talking to my friend gan gan i have i have i have one of one of my very very best friends in the world is is my my friend gan gash and he i i know i know indian culture i not from first person experience obviously but i know indian culture very 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 well and uh, uh it it is it is a unique culture uh, Indian people are uh, highly intelligent, highly driven. And even if their parents are not successful, okay, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. They still want their children to be, um, to, to, to be highly educated, to, to be financially successful. And a lot of times they hold their children to standards that, you know, they, they didn't even hold themselves to. Now, that's not everybody's story. But um, you're you're really. I feel like I'm talking to my friend Gengesh right now. I mean, seriously, because the way that that you're describing, you know, but it, it, it's not this, it's not it's not disrespect towards your family because I hear you very clearly saying that, hey, you know, husband, if if you if you don't want me doing something, if you think I'm unsafe, if you think it's not good for our family, please tell me. But but please be logical. Please be rational. Please make a good argument, right? Exactly. Because I am feeling alive and motivated, and this is what I want to do, and this mm -hmm. is what I'm doing, and I want to honor you. And I have new information here that yeah. is 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 taking me on a different path. And so um, th this is this is good stuff. Let's talk about your favorite marketing strategies and what are the difference between the different platforms that you're marketing on from your perspective? I think the one thing that remains the same on all platforms is just being yourself and taking initial feedback. So on multiple platforms, when I saw, I saw that initially, if I had just 10 followers, I would put up a sticker everywhere asking questions of what kind of content do you want? What do you not know about this subject? You know, and whatever they don't know about the subject is what I'm going to teach them. So I started with the thought that if I have one follower, I'm going to make that one follower marketer, whatever they need so to make that one follower marketer. I just I just molded my marketing strategies like that. So multiple platforms. Obviously, multiple people will have multiple other things to say, and they will not totally understand something. But you have to come from a perspective that when you were a beginner, you didn't know everything. And again, going back to the Indian culture, safe, protective, stable, yeah. you kind of have to go out there and repeatedly do things, even if it is so repetitive. So every morning I'll go, and I've learned this from you, Every week I'll go live. The first statement I'll put out is, what is affiliate marketing? Because I have to start there. Mm. So that's, that's the kind of strategy, if you're honest, if you're just yourself. And if you take feedback from your audience, be it whatever platform I think you can grow. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And yeah, I mean, I, I am doing this show every day because this is, this is part of my personal marketing strategy. This is part of our legendary marketer marketing strategy. I mean, yeah. this is this is so many powerful things all tied up into one, right? The first powerful thing is that I'm here every single day or Joanne is sitting in sometimes on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. The consistency is unparalleled. The consistency creates security. 
the fact that we send out a text message every day, and by the way, if anybody's listening wants that text message, you can text WUL to 813-296-8553. It's, it's like a radio show. It's like here every day at the same time, right? We've done now nearly 800 episodes. The second thing that makes it powerful is that it's consistent in how it looks, right? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the same place every day. It, it creates familiarity. It, that creates trust in kind of, um, uh, you know, just, okay, I know where he's at. I know where he's going to be. I know what this is going to look like. Um, the other thing is the social proof here. I'm bringing people on. It's not just me talking. There's a yeah. powerful lesson in that in content creation. Exactly. That it's important to mix in other people because if it's just you all the time, you, you, you know, you're only, everything is always coming from first person. And it's so much more powerful when people hear it from a, another, call it third party, right? Uh -huh. It, it, you know, a third party testimonial is, is, is way more powerful. A five, a 30 second third party testimonial is way more powerful than you sitting there for 20 minutes talking into your blue in the face. Now, how would somebody who's just starting to create content implement third party testimonials? Learn to tell other people's stories, right? That's one way. If you don't have a success story in the niche that you're working in, find other people who story you can tell and tell their story and then make a point after you've told that story. For example, you know, if somebody happens to be promoting legendary, well, there's so many different stories that you can tell of people who are successful um, from all different walks of life, from all different cultures, from all different backgrounds, all different ages, all different, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, physical appearances, all kinds of walks of life you have here to be able to tell that story. Quite frankly, it, it's, it can be more powerful when you're telling stories that are not always about you, right? Yeah. Okay. And, and that leads me to telling your story. When you create content every single day consistently, whether you're going live, whether you're posting videos, so many people are afraid to tell their story over and over again. You feel like if you've talked about it one time, then people are going to get bored about it. But I love what you said. Every, you know, you're obviously working in the passive income, make money online niche, you know, business, online business niche. And you're talking about, for example, affiliate marketing. And you start your lives or your videos off talking about that every time. That's so important. So often we think that we need to talk about complicated topics. We okay. need to we need to demonstrate our expertise. This is part of a limiting. This is part of a a. Um, it's not only a limiting belief. It's a misplaced belief. It's yes. a it's it's not it's not real. You don't need to know a lot to make an impression or an impact on people. Mm -hmm. The majority of your buyers in any niche are going to be people who are either contemplating getting started with that thing or are just getting started. Very rarely, and I'm talking about 1% or less of the people who are going to buy from you in any niche are going to be people who already have a lot of experience in that niche. So 99% of your content needs to be, um, it's, you know, it needs to be targeted towards that person who is in that contemplative state, which is one of the reasons why this show right here is a marketing, it's a part of our marketing strategy. It's also part of our edutainment strategy. But why are we not going into in-depth technical stuff on this, on this show every day? Because the majority of people who are watching this are still in contemplative state. Whether you've bought our stuff and haven't taken action or you're thinking about buying our stuff, it, it, it wouldn't do you any good for me to sit here and go into complicated technical strategies because that would only overwhelm you and create more questions for you. Rather, it's more powerful to hear people's stories to get inspired, to, 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 to sort of talk about things that everybody can understand because that, that is the type of content that moves people out of a contemplative state 
into an action oriented state? What comes up for you? That was a platinum nugget. I'm throwing the hat for myself on that one. <laughs> what comes That's up for you as I talk about sort of the, the, the types of content to be created and who are the majority of all of our target audience when we are creating content out there? I think it's possible that from where I come from, a lot of people come from. So if I come from the position that it was a scam, if, if I come from a position that I don't understand this, if I come from the position that I've never even heard of it, a lot of people come from that position. And if I put myself in their shoes or just the shoes I was wearing when I started or almost didn't start, that's the point. When you almost didn't start, all of the thoughts that you have. So that was kind of my content strategy as well in the beginning. I literally wrote down every single question I had when I almost didn't start. Nugget. And that's that's that was my content for the first 30 days i almost didn't start why didn't i almost didn't start and that was my content and that's all i think that's what people related to that's right now let me let me let me just ask you know there's 372 people right here listening how many of you also when you started were skeptical all of that how many of you also thought is this a scam you know Am I about to get my, you know, are these guys going to take my $7? And, you know, I mean, it's like a real fear, right? It's like, you know, it, it is. I mean, we could, you know, we'll, we're like this at the mall all day long buying Gucci and everything else. And we don't know where the hell that stuff was made or if it's real or whatever. But I tell you, entering those credit card details onto a page on the, on the internet, you know, even if it's only $7 is a, it's a scary thing. Right. Yeah. And we're like, you know, we can treat seven dollars like it's like seven hundred dollars. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't want to give up this seven dollars. I don't want to get scammed out of this seven dollars. But yeah. it is the number one fear that we all deal with and dealt with when we first got started. So if 80 percent of your content is just about that, I mean, let's just say that you're working in this niche. If you were working in any other niche, let's just say you were working in the dog training niche. 80% of your content can be about just getting started in overcoming your own fear of getting started training your dog that you can actually do it. That, 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 you know, there are real strategies. It's about, it's about creating belief in somebody that it can actually work for them because the majority of people when they're starting and they're thinking about training their dog, they think, it won't work for me. My yes. dog's too bad. My dog, yes. I, my dog's too dumb. I'm too dumb. I'm my, not dog's, dumb. my dog's too old, right? It's I've, I've missed that, right? So 80 to 90% of your content is just educating people that it's safe. It's not too late. It's not too late for the dog. It's not too late for you, right? Kind of getting people to understand that it's not even the dog that you need to train. It's yourself that you need to train. Right. What what comes up for you as I'm talking about is this is a real light bulb moment for I hope for a lot of people who are watching this. I mean, this is you're you're back in the dump truck of not gold nuggets, but platinum nuggets and just dropping it all over people's driveway this morning. We should be charging for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that. And I don't want to be offensive when I say it, but Please. I personally thought that this is something not for the brown skinned. I just thought that. Wow, that is so wow, deep and vulnerable. I I just thought that I even after getting an education, engineering, MBA, working with hundreds of different companies, you know, working in data. And let me tell you to all the people who are listening data analytics for the next 10 years 10 years is powerful it is projected to be the best job when it comes to a nine to five the best job for the next 10 years that even ai won't replace and i'm sitting here telling you today that go build a business for yourself because a job however beautiful amazing and you know however good it is the work the economy is always rising and you have to keep up with it. You have to have an additional income source for it. So you have to start from there. 
yeah. coming back to my pages, I actually have another page on Instagram. And that's my personal site. That's a very personal page for me. And I share all of my immigrant struggles and I make videos in Hindi. And I don't have any makeup on. I just wake up, I'm cooking. I literally tied a bun and stuff and people relate to that stuff. And tomorrow, if I go there and recommend something, people buy through my links because they know I'm not lying about it. Mm. They know that she's recommending something that she believes in and they've, you, they've seen me use it multiple times. So, I mean, it was a light bulb moment for me when I started learning that this is okay, what this is and then started MMO and, and I thought, okay, this is what it is. But then I go there, share my honest self without, with zero filters and people believe me, they trust me. I think it's a blessing to go out there and even one person reaching out to you saying that, hey, I look up to you or I believe you, not even look up to you. That's huge, that's a huge responsibility. But I just believe you. I think that's amazing. Wow, you shared a lot right there. That was that was that was that was a lot. That was very honest. That was very very powerful, and and so you led us into a little bit of of, of your own limiting beliefs of what you the story that you had inside of your head about what you were capable of or if this was a good if this was even possible for you. Right? Yeah. You mentioned people with. Uh, this may not be right for people or, 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 or people with brown skin couldn't be, couldn't be successful at this. How have you, how have you broke through the ceilings of that limiting belief? What do you now look back and what do you tell yourself now? What I always call it the soundtrack, right? You let us, you, you, you just let us know what the soundtrack was that was playing. And it probably was other things too. I mean, there was probably a lot of limiting beliefs just as there were with me. What do you tell yourself now? I mean, besides you just did tell us one, which is own a damn business. Even if you're in an de data analytics, which is the most you know, uh, you know, know, projected to be the largest, most successful industry over the next 10 years, what do you tell yourself? How have you been reintroduced to you, to parody? How, how have you... What have you learned about yourself through this process that you did not know or believe before? I thought that I didn't belong in a lot of places. So I come from India. I came to Australia, different country, different culture, and a different economy. So um, I just, for, for such a long time, I didn't believe that I belonged here. I just felt out of place. And I even made thousands of videos about it that there's no place you don't belong. If you put your heart to it, you have, to, if you bring value to the table, you have a seat at the table mm. and you continue to have that. And that is the biggest realization that I have. I am not a marketer. I'm, I'm tasting in the sense that I never thought that people will relate just to my story. I was not there with the intention of just promoting something that I wanted to. I was there with the intention of that this is something that changed my life. This is something I think that can change your life. And I just shared my story. And I saw that a lot of people feel that they don't belong somewhere, which is so crazy. You're just a human being, right? Just because you look different, you talk different, you walk different. That's no parameter to say that you don't belong there, right? So just keep bringing value to the table and you'll have the seat. So This is something that my... It is very, I think it's important to all of us, but also particularly one of my best friends, Genga, she has a similar kind of very deep conviction about feeling um, convicted about what he's doing and, and a very deep thinker in the same way that you you mentioned you'd created thousands of videos on this topic, just sharing your thoughts. And, and um, you know, obviously all of us have the, this a similar, you know, similar but different limiting beliefs that, that sort of circulate around in our head when we first get started. For me, I didn't think that this recovering drug addict slash ex-homeless slash teenage father slash 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 guy who was 24 years old when I started and got clean, uh, you know, would, would, would have a seat at the table either. I mean, it, you know, and I had, um, 
it, you know, I, I wasn't dealing with the, um, the, the same things that you were dealing with okay. in terms of uh, feeling sort of disqualified by skin color or, mm -hmm. or being in a different country, right? I mean, I'm still here as a, you know, as a white man in America, which is, um, you know, is, is the, is, you know, there's a lot of us here, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like we're the minority, right? But I, I had my, I had created my own limiting beliefs inside of my head and, and, um, I needed to prove to myself that they weren't true until I did that. I was not going to have any success. I was always going to be dominated by that thought that I was just a useless junkie, that I was just a, 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 a sorry high school dropout who didn't have an education, that I was just a screw up teenage father who now was 24 years old with a 10 year old kid. And, um, you know, now I'm 15 years clean and sober. Um, you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur and a business owner. Uh, I, my son is 22 years old, works for Legendary Marketer, and is actually wow. sitting on this live right now, right? Wow. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, that didn't happen overnight, obviously. That didn't yeah. happen overnight. Yeah. But I, I had to prove to myself first, just like you, yeah that these things that I'm telling myself about myself are not true. And I, and that I also have a seat at the table and that I don't need just like you don't or anybody else need to prove your worth to yeah. anybody else in order to pull up a chair. Mm -hmm. The person that you need to prove your worth to is you. It's yeah. me. And that will always be the most important and most difficult person because there are a lot of successful people who do not have their family's approval. There are a lot of successful <laughs> Indians who are doing things that they're paying, right? There are a lot of successful Americans, you know, who I have, I have, I have white male American friends also who their parents wanted them to be doctors and they're not doctors and they, and they, and they didn't get their parents approval. This is not just something that's specific to a culture or a specific yes. race, but my friends, we all have our own BS lies and limiting beliefs that we have to, we have to extinguish. It's a fire that's burning inside of your brain and you have to get out the extinguisher to put that out to in order to play a new soundtrack and, and, and begin. Sometimes we have to be intentional. Sometimes affirmations are needed. Sometimes vision boards. Sometimes you need to write stuff on your mirrors. I am worthy. I, am, I have a message. I am powerful. I am legendary. I am a badass. Whatever it is, I am is powerful. And how we talk about ourselves to ourselves, not to our, exactly. it, you know, the most powerful way that we talk about ourselves is to ourselves and, and how the things that we say even quietly. But the second, and I would argue it's equally as powerful, is the way that we talk about ourselves to other people, yeah. because that is the opportunity for us to stand up for ourselves how we talk about ourselves to our parents, right? Who we, who may disapprove of what we're doing because we're not, we're not, you know, we're not fulfilling their dreams for us or whatever. Right. Or if, or our husbands, spouses, friends, also the way in which we do not explain to people what we are doing. Sometimes the right thing to do is say nothing. Yes. Sometimes the most powerful thing to do that I need to do for myself is to explain nothing. Nothing at all. Yes. Does, does that resonate with you? Yes. So much. So much. Like a lot of people ask me, how do you handle the hate? I'm busy working on myself. If it is a feedback, if it is something that I need to improve, if it is a question, I'm all there. But if it is just out straight hate, I'm so busy working on myself, building my business, building myself, that there's nothing to say. Yeah.
and I love your word, feedback. I use that word every day, all day, because it's one of the most important words in my vocabulary for me to really, really understand. And getting feedback is a very different thing than getting criticism or mm -hmm. shaming. Shame. Uh, 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 yeah, shame, right? Feedback, particularly, even if it's, care, I call it, one of my mentors uh, who's not in marketing. He's not even in business. He, he's a therapist and he's, I've worked with him for seven years and he's just, he's, he's a deep, powerful mentor in my life. And, um, and, and he always says, uh, uh, he always uses the word carefrontation because confrontation can be, can be, uh, critical. It can be shaming. It, it can be yeah. mean, but carefrontation is feedback or um, or or um, somebody telling me the truth in a caring way, right? And I need that in I a world that. of 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 uh, you know people uh, BSing me, people telling me what I want to hear, people being mean. I need to. I don't need what I call yes, Dave's right. People who are just going to agree with everything I say. I also don't need critics, shamers, and haters. I need people right there who are going to tell me the truth right in the middle, who are not going to, who are not going to um, coddle me. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to be afraid to tell me the truth. They're, they're just going to tell me what's true for them. It doesn't yeah. even have to be true for me because yeah. the majority, if not all of feedback is always about the person who's giving the feedback. It's rarely yeah. ever about the person that they're talking to. So yeah. I always need to receive everything knowing that that whatever that person is saying, it's being filtered through their own filter, right? But if somebody is genuinely trying to give me feedback, genuine, and you know what? I read everything, even if it's shaming, you know, because I, I have the power to either absorb that or not, right? If I can tell that it's shaming, I can tell that it's mean, I just say, mm, I'm sorry for that person. They must be hurting. Uh, if it's overly positive and it's just, you know, I can obviously see that that person's just trying to, you know, just trying to, just trying to please me and, and in turn get approval for themselves. But if somebody's telling me the truth, man, man, I really value that. You know, I really, and sometimes what we perceive online as hate is actually not hate. It is genuine feedback. And, and, we can learn so much when people take a moment to say something and we should be grateful whenever, especially when we're starting. But even now I get, you know, there's so many comments I can't keep up with them all, but I'm grateful for every single one because it tells me a little bit about, it helps me to know somebody more. It helps me to, to, to understand how I may be coming off to people. Maybe yeah. that's not my intention, but it, how yeah. it's landing. Right. Yeah. And it's all valuable. It's so, I'm so glad that you've used that word this morning. There's also another saying called, there is no failure, only feedback. And that's a, a, a phrase from NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is a therapy technique. A lot of people think it's a sales and a closing technique. It's actually uh -huh. not. It's a therapy technique. And there's only failure, there's, there's no failure, only feedback. And it's true. All of the things that we do if we do them, they are never a failure. Even if you it did not turn out the way that you wanted, the situation is giving you feedback for you to adjust. And instead, it's all about how you perceive that feedback. If you filter that through a shame filter and say, yeah. "Oh, I'm you know I'm a big failure," yeah. this, right? Yeah. But if you filter it through just okay, this just is. This just is what happened. It's not good. It's not bad. But let me make an adjustment based on what happened and then run another test to see how this next version turns out. Then I realize that there's never any feedback. There's, on, there's never any failure. There's only feedback. So everything in life becomes feedback to me. And that yeah. is a really empowering place to be. And it seems like that's where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. I write everything. So every email, every DM, every comment that I receive, the negative ones, I try to explain what it is to an extent that I can. Otherwise, I'll write everything down in my diary and I'm like, next year I'm going to be so expensive for you. I'm going to launch my own coaching and you watch. <laughs> so thank you. That's, that's really, I am grateful for 
the feedback, the negative comments, the positive comments, because that that's what makes my brand my brand, yeah. right? That's how you grow. And it's okay. Even the best restaurant in the world has a negative review. So that's okay. Yeah. Parody, as we bring this powerful, wonderful, inspirational conversation here on Friday, and what a beautiful conversation to have leading into the weekend, what advice would you give to yourself that you now are able to give with the feedback that you've gotten from the action that you've taken and the knowledge that you have, what did you need to hear? What would you have told yourself when you were first coming into this process that, that you, you maybe didn't hear or just simply have the ability now to tell yourself? Two things. The regret of not starting is much bigger than the regret of failing. And there's no failure, like you said. And second, never settle for less. Just, just that. Never settle for less. Keep wow. looking. Keep working. Wow. That's all. So simple. So powerful. Go to bed, my friend. Okay. <laughs> I know you're up way past your bedtime, especially if you go to bed at ten a uh, ten p.m. every night. Then, and, and thank you for doing that. Thank you for staying up, and joining us, and in, in just bringing so much powerful insight and experience and in love to our episode today you have a beautiful wonderful sleep and we'll we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon please come back and see me okay absolutely i'll see you there okay parody thank, talk you, so much. Bye -bye. thank you all right my friends you can go find and follow and support and learn from parody at passive income parody Spelled passive income, just like it sounds. Parody is P A R I D H I. Again, P A R I D H I. My friends, tomorrow, Saturday, August 26, we have a virtual mastermind coming for anybody who has purchased a mastermind ticket. Yeah, you didn't know that we were going to throw in these kind of bonuses, did you? And guess who our speakers are, my friends? Um, I'm going to go right in here and see if I can pull up uh, our Facebook uh, or excuse me, our legendary marketer group and actually uh, show you, my friends. I am absolutely so excited about uh, this session tomorrow. I'm going to pull up this graphic here so everybody can see it uh, and, and see what I am so excited about. Here we go. Tomorrow, Chelsea Weemit. Okay, my friends, uh, the phenom, the just legendary marketer, okay? She is absolutely crushing it, doing things that uh, most people really, um, really, really are dreaming of doing. And, and yes, it's possible. Yes, uh, you have it within you. And tomorrow she's going to show and explain exactly how she's done uh, what she's done. Many of you know that uh, she's, of course, a dynamic marketer, somebody who's who's uh, doing you know all kinds of incredible things. Uh, in just our affiliate program alone, has hit two x diamond, and I believe that all happened just this year. So do the math on that. Um, Tim Hewitt, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, one of the most helpful, knowledgeable uh, marketers inside of our community here. Uh, he is also going to be joining. Tim is somebody who is kind, gentle, um, patient, knowledgeable, uh, is, so, is so incredibly helpful and is a fantastic marketer and entrepreneur uh, as well in his own right. And then Megan Hall. Uh, the um, uh, down-to-earth marketer, I think, is one of the ways in which she describes herself. Uh, very relatable, very funny, very interesting, uh, just an incredible person, an incredible marketer. Uh, sh uh, all three of these marketers have achieved amazing things, are extremely knowledgeable, and are going to be presenting for all of us. Again, tomorrow, August 26, 2023, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and how you would get into that is that you would have bought a mastermind ticket. This is a bonus. I know you never know how we're going to over deliver here at Legendary Marketer. You really don't. This is a bonus for anybody uh, who has um, uh, who has bought a mastermind ticket and um, you're still able to attend an in-person mastermind as well, of course. 
but um, how are you going to register? You're going to log into your back office. You're going to click on products. You're going to click on legendary market or mastermind. You're going to click register next to the August 26th virtual event. Um, and, uh, you know, if you are a blueprint member looking to upgrade to the mastermind package, you can email Joanne at legendarymarketer.com and very quickly get a checkout link. You can also reach back out to your business plan advisor. Lots of ways to get a hold of us to be able to take advantage of this amazing uh, opportunity, which we are presenting as a very simple bonus, okay, to all of our blueprint clients. It is not too late, Amanda. It is not too late. Yes, I just gave those instructions. Um, so uh, go into our, our uh, um, go into our business blueprints group if you're a blueprints member. If not, again, you can email Joanne at legendarymarketer.com. That is J O A N N. Okay, let me bring this up just because I see some. Is it too late? Questions. It is not. Okay, let me let me expand this. See if I can. Okay, see if I can do this. All right. Right here, joanne at legendarymarketer.com for a checkout link or reach out to your business plan advisor, okay? Or reach out to your business plan advisor. My friends, what a week of Wake Up Legendary. I mean, it just keeps getting better and better, just keeps getting funner and funner, if that's a word. And today's episode was um, extremely powerful. Remember that we upload all of these. Uh, you can watch them right here on Facebook. We also upload them over to YouTube. Just you know, search. I think uh, it's under my name over on YouTube, David Sharp. Uh, and we also uh, upload them all to all major podcast platforms. Um, just type in and search Wake Up Legendary. All right, my friends, for those of you who will be at the Mastermind, the virtual Mastermind tomorrow, I will see you there. And for those of you who will not, we will be back here on Monday, as always, at 10 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m., excuse me, Eastern time for another episode. Get on out of here. Appreciate you all. Stay legendary. Peace.